Welcome to Unwired Learning. In this, the third part of the MOSFET series on analysis in DC, we are going to revisit the dual supply circuit we did in the previous video. In particular, we're going to look at how we can redesign that circuit to be a single supply circuit. And we're going to solve a single supply biasing circuit. This time, however, it's going to turn out that that circuit's in triode mode. Even though we know now that it's going to be in triode mode, we should go through the process so we can learn how we can determine that it wasn't in saturation. Here we can see the circuit that we solved in the second video. In this case, we can see that we have two supplies, a 4 volt supply and a 10 volt supply. But it's possible to use a 4 resistor biasing circuit to modify the left side of this and turn it into a single supply circuit. The question that we are going to ask ourselves is what are the values of R1 and R2? To do this, we must again recognize that there should be no current going through the gate. Because there's no current going through the gate, this circuit becomes a simple voltage divider where we take 10 volts and we find a new voltage here which we need to be 4 volts based on the division of these two resistors. Therefore, we can write the equation that 4 volts equals 10 volts times R2 over R1 plus R2. This is a voltage divider equation. Rearranging this equation to solve for R2, we get R2 equals 0.4 times R1 plus R2. Now, we're not quite there yet. What we need to do now is recognize that we can do a Thevenin equivalent of this left side. In that case, what we find is that these two resistors appear in parallel. And, and the value of these two resistors in parallel that we desire comes from the value of 600 kilo ohms over in the original circuit. So therefore, we can write that 600 kilo ohms equals R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Now we can see that we have two equations and two unknowns, R1 and R2. We'll take the first equation and we'll plug it into the second equation. Plugging that in gives us R1 times 0.4 times R1 plus R2 divided by R1 plus R2. However, now we can see that we have an R1 plus R2 on both the top and the bottom, and therefore we can cancel them. This leaves us with R1 equals 1500 kilo ohms, or 1.5 mega ohms. Now it's a simple matter of using our previous equation for R2 and plugging in the value that we found for R1 to solve for the value we need for R2. Plugging in the value for R1, we find that R2 equals 0.4 times 1.5 mega ohms plus R2. Moving the 0.4 to the left side, we get 2.5 R2 equals 1.5 mega plus R2. Isolating R2, we find that R2 equals 1 mega ohm. And now we can see how we can take a dual supply circuit and turn it into a single supply circuit. Of course, this is not a one-way transaction. We can go from a single supply circuit over to a dual supply circuit using the Thevenin equivalent of the left side. Here we have a single supply example problem. In this case, we have a supply of 12 volts and we have a four resistor biasing circuit. And here we have the parameters for the MOSFET. Much like most of our problems, we're gonna consider that the gate current is zero. This means that we can fairly easily solve for the gate voltage by using a voltage division between the R1 and R2 resistors. In this case, the 2.2 mega ohm and the 1.5 mega ohm resistors. Writing this out, we can say that VG equals 1.5 mega ohms divided by 1.5 mega ohms plus 2.2 mega ohms times 12 volts, and we find the result to be 4.865 volts for VG. Next, we can find the voltage at the source. Since below the source it's grounded, and we have a 12 kilo ohm resistor, then the voltage at the source is simply the drain current ID times the 12 kilo ohms. Now we can find an equation for the drain voltage. In this case, we can see that we have a 12 volt supply, and then we have the 39 kilo ohm resistor. So we can write that VD equals 12 volts minus 39 times ID. As stated at the beginning, even though we know this is going to be in triode mode, let's go ahead and solve the problem assuming saturation mode so we can learn how to determine that we had an incorrect assumption of saturation mode. Writing out the saturation mode equation, we have ID equals 1 half KN VG minus VS minus VT quantity squared. Substituting we find that ID equals 1 half times 1 half times 4.86 volts for VG minus 12 ID for VS minus 1 for the threshold voltage quantity squared. 
Simplifying this and moving the two one-halves over to the left-hand side, we get 4ID equals quantity minus 12ID plus 3.865 quantity squared. Expanding the square, we can say that 4ID equals 144ID squared minus 92.756ID plus 14.94. Moving the 4ID from the left side to the right side, we get 0 equals 144ID squared minus 96.756ID plus 14.94. Even though I'm not going to show it here, we obviously get two values of ID. Checking against those two values, we find that ID equals 0.24 milliamps. Now's the time to check our mode. Using 0.24 milliamps for drain current and multiplying that by 12 kiloohms, we find that Vs equals 2.88 volts. Similarly, plugging in for the Vd equation, we find that Vd equals 2.64 volts. Now we can find Vds, and we find that value to be minus 0.24 volts, which is obviously not possible for saturation mode. Therefore, we can say that we must be in triode mode, or we must be in cutoff, but let's assume triode mode and resolve. Writing out the triode mode equation, we get ID equals KN times VOV times VDS minus one half VDS squared. Since the triode mode equation is a function of VOV and VDS, let's go ahead and write some expressions for those two values. Starting with VDS, we find that VDS equals 12 minus 39 ID minus 12 ID. Combining, we get 12 minus 51 ID. We can also come up with an expression for VGS, and we can say that VGS equals 4.865 minus 12 ID. Since the threshold voltage is simply 1 volt, we can now write an expression for the overvoltage VOV, and we can say that VOV equals minus 12 ID plus 3.865. Substituting, we get a nice long expression for ID we find that ID equals 1 half times the quantity of minus 12 ID plus 3.865 times minus 51 ID plus 12 minus 1 half of minus 51 ID plus 12 quantity squared. Rearranging and doing a bunch of algebra, we can find that 2 ID equals minus 688.5 ID squared plus 270.9 ID minus 25.62. Moving the 2 ID over from left to right, we find 0 equals minus 688.5 ID squared plus 268.9 ID minus 25.62. Using a solver, we can find two different values for ID. The first value is 0 0.165 milliamps, and the second value is 0 0.226 milliamps. Using our two equations for VD and VS over here, we can then find that we have two different values for VD. The value corresponding to the current of 0 0.165 milliamps is 5.565 volts. The value corresponding to 0 0.226 milliamps is 3.2 volts. Similarly, we can do the same thing for VS. For the current of 0 0.165 milliamps, we find that Vs equals 1.98 volts. For the other current of 0 0.226 milliamps, we find that Vs is 2.7 volts. Now we need to check our mode. For the smaller current of 0 0.165 milliamps, we can find that Vds equals 3.858 volts. For the larger current, we can find that Vds equals 0 0.5. We can also solve for the overvoltage. For the smaller current, we find that the overvoltage is 1.885 volts. And for the larger current, we find that VOV is equal to 1.158 volts. Comparing these, we can see that for the smaller current, VDS is larger than VOV. And for the larger current of 0 0.226 milliamps, we find that VDS is actually smaller than VOV. When VDS is larger than VOV, that means we're in saturation mode. However, when VDS is smaller than VOV, that means we're in triode. We've already determined that we're not in saturation mode from the previous work. So therefore, it must be the case that 0 0.226 milliamps is the correct current. And therefore, VD of 3.2 is correct, VS of 2.7 volts is correct, and all the other currents and voltages are incorrect. And now you can see that solving a circuit in triode mode 
is very similar to that of saturation mode in that you have to solve a quadratic equation. However, as you can see, the quadratic equation is a little bit more complicated to, to reduce. And that does it for this video of Unwired Learning.